Now, while we are addressing DHRE's portfolio, which seems to be quite an extensive and strong one, uh, do you want to get into the specifics of just um, how you're maximizing focus on your waterfront projects? And maybe also let us in on some of your current and upcoming waterfront projects. Yeah, so, I mean, waterfront and, and the water is, you know, it's deep ingrained in the legacy and history of Dubai. Um, and I think you, you can't get away from, from the history of Dubai being focused on, on the water, on, on the port, um, on pearling, etc. So it's, it's always a very important part of life here and of the culture here, and it's a big tradition. So many of our projects, um, not just now, but for many years, have been focused around the waterfront. So uh, on the creek, we've delivered um, the Jalaf waterfront uh, as a master community, uh, with Dubai Wharf and Manaslau Core contained within those master plans. Um, we've also delivered Business Bay as well, uh, with a lot of waterfront premises there. I think more modern ones, I think uh, we've also uh, got plots of land, uh, and we've uh, support the development of Dubai Water Canal. Um, so that's a very interesting new project in Dubai that's really changed the cityscape quite a lot for us all there. And then when we look more towards the beachfront locations, uh, Miras has a legacy with uh, Blue Waters and with uh, Jumeirah Bay Island of, of delivering um, delivering those sorts of projects. We've delivered Jumeirah Beach Residence, is probably one of the, the very old legacy uh, projects that, that goes back a large number of years, and we've continued to develop that. So La Vie, which is actually the final plot of land available at Jumeirah Beach Residence, is, is now getting developed, and we're starting to see that coming out of the ground. And then our latest waterfront project, uh, Port de la Mer, uh, we continue to develop there. Um, we've still got capacity within that master plan. We're still looking at how we utilize that that space and really develop a, a new lifestyle destination for, for Dubai. And um, yeah, we, we did our, the latest launch. We actually launched for sales last Thursday. So yeah, we continue to focus on waterfront. And I think it's all a balance. You know, we have a portfolio that has those waterfront locations. Uh, but then we also have urban locations, city walk. Uh, Madnat Jumeirah Living, and then we have the suburban development. So we have the Cherrywoods, Serenas, Moodons, Villanova. So we actually develop across a whole big portfolio of, of projects. And I think maybe the, the waterfront have the wow factor a little bit more um, and, uh, and offer a certain lifestyle uh, and maybe attract more visitors. Um, whereas we also have more family oriented. Um, more home ownership focused out in suburban locations. Right. A very well-balanced portfolio indeed. Now, before we wrap up, Alex, yep. I'd like for you to comment on the current state of Dubai's real estate sector. Um, just do you think it's well on its way to recovery? Um, and when do you think it you know, will get back up on its feet again? Um, I think we've, we've had a great recovery. We've had a really good start to the year. I think in the first five months of 2021, um, we've seen nearly 5,000 transactions and nearly uh, 11 billion dirhams worth of real estate sales. And that's as reported by um, DLD and, and RERA. So we really are starting starting to see the market pick up. Uh, there's been a, a big transition to secondary market homes, so completed homes, ready homes. So whereas last year in 2020, nearly 60% of transactions were off plan, uh, we're now seeing that Reverse. So we're now seeing more 60% of transactions being ready properties, which again indicates <clears throat> indicates people um, looking for home ownership, people who who want to settle and, and they want to they want to achieve that home now. Um, I think there's an awful lot being done by the government um, in terms of making sure that that Dubai continues to be a great place. So there's an awful lot of activity gone on with uh, visas, with citizenship. Um, with uh, remote working, workation visas, as some people are calling them, um, with 100% foreign investment in companies. You know, there's a real attractiveness, and they just continue to drive that investment through making this a really attractive market. <clears throat> so we are seeing people actually seeing Dubai as a, as a place to stay. Uh, it's becoming much more people are settling here, people are having families here, and they are here. And, and that's now facilitated with retirement visa, et cetera. So people are really settling here. And I think with the foreign direct investment uh, drive, 100% ownership of, of companies, onshore companies, I think we're also starting to see more foreign direct investment coming here. And, and we, can't, we can't forget the, the great efforts that have been done here through the 
keeping us all safe through the height of the um, of the COVID pandemic and then with the vaccination drive. Yeah. So people are starting to feel really safe and secure being here in Dubai. They're starting to see rules that allow them to maintain that stability here. And I think all of that is leading to a, a positive market sentiment. Um, and, and we hope and, and we firmly believe that it will continue to stay positive. Um, you know, we're not at levels of real estate prices that we saw in previous peaks. So we're confident that this will continue. And, and long may, I think there's been great strides taken forward in really adding to the maturity of the market. here. Okay, that's quite a positive outlook, Alex. Thanks very much again for joining me. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that was all for this episode, but we shall be back very soon. Until then, like, share, comment, and subscribe to Construction Week's YouTube channel for more such content. Thank you for watching.